Looks, I'm happy, I'm happy, I'm happy, I'm happy, I'm happy. I am happy I finally found my place. So a lot of the people that I hang out with, they talk like that. It's like the ah. Uh, when I first meet them, they're like, you're from America. <laughs> Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on where you are. As you can kind of see, I'm in a different place, but this still isn't my actual apartment. I moved from East London to New Cavendish about a week and a day ago. And today I finally get my keys to move into my apartment. I'm so excited. I'm tired of living in temporary living and I want to get settled into my place so it can start feeling like home. The place that I was living at in Aldgate, see I said a little better now, Aldgate, and Aldgate felt a little bit more like home, but then I obviously had to move because my apartment wasn't ready. Corporate housing is expensive, and I was reaching the point where it was no longer gonna get subsidized, so I was like, okay, if I'm paying 100% by myself, I'm not staying here. So I moved into a smaller studio apartment just to get myself by until I moved into my actual apartment. Today I'll be getting my keys. I have one more night in this apartment, and the reason for that is because my furniture doesn't get here until tomorrow. And the obvious question some people may have from that explanation is, why don't you just move tomorrow? And that would be the easiest way to do it. However, I'm on the fourth floor of a walk-up building, which I didn't know when I booked. Obviously, I have four gigantic suitcases. And I literally broke every single nail on my finger trying to bring my baggage upstairs. I still haven't even gotten them redone. And that is why I'm not trying to move four bags down four flights of stairs at the same time. A few things I have to set up once I move in is to have my permit home station kind of delivered to me. So I need to order a standing desk. I wanna have a standing desk in my guest room. I have a two bedroom. And I'm gonna to have to order from my actual employer the double screens, the phone and everything so I can be you know, as productive as possible in my workspace at home as well. Set up a bank account. I still haven't set up a bank account, but now that I have a permanent address, I can go ahead and set up that bank account so that I'll be able to pay rent and everything without using bank transfers, which is what I've been doing now. And I still need to get my permanent biometrics card for my residency. So basically my temporary visa expires in May, but I have to get this biometrics thing done. And after that, I can stay until 2024. I plan to get all three of those things done in this video, as well as explain a little bit about my apartment searching process. So if that sounds interesting to you, keep watching. fight again this is pretty cool it was so like discreet when i moved in wouldn't think that was right here hello samantha how are you doing today i need your help yet together we're gonna put in there i got really bad back that's fine let me grab the other one so i have two stops but the first stop i'm just gonna grab a set of keys and then go to the second stop So I won't be too loud. Home, 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 home. This is my. I don't know what you want on it yet. So I have this one it has this little nook. So I was like, okay, I don't know if this little nook is gonna be good or bad. And then 
this room, which is smaller, but kind of more, like, I don't know. So. Looks, I'm happy, I'm happy, I'm happy, I'm happy, I'm happy. I am happy I finally found my place and I can't wait to see how it looks when the furniture comes in. I'm just really excited overall. Like this is a nice spot. Like I feel like I would definitely be happy here. Ah, I got my apartment. I feel good about the space. Uh, it's really quiet, which is great. But at the same time, it's really close to a tube station and a semi-touristy area. When people come visit, they could just, you know, check out that area. So overall, I like it. I can't wait to make it mine. Hey everyone, I'm back and I'm better. As you can see, I've moved into my apartment. I'm feeling great. So I was actually supposed to go to Peckham today with someone and do some exploring because I like to explore different neighborhoods on the weekends. It's Saturday. However, it's getting pretty late. It's almost five. So I kind of feel like that is out the window. It doesn't really make sense to explore over there anymore. So instead, I'm going to go to Allgate, which is where I moved from. I didn't visit this place surprisingly when I was living in Allgate. So I'm going to go now. It's called Coco something. Coco. It's Coco something. It's supposed to be this Afro-Caribbean place and it's supposed to be fun, good music and good food. So I'm by myself, but I'm going to go check it out and see what's going on over there. Shoot, hopefully you never know. Hopefully I can make some new friends. I'm still in the process of making friends, which I'll talk a little bit about in the next clip because someone asked about it and I'm gonna do like a little sit down Q&A. So yeah, off to the spot. Let's see how it is. <laughs> I did, I did, I did, I did. I've been here for a week. So positive, I just met my neighbor. He let me put all my stuff in his apartment, which is a plus. He said he'll be back in 30 minutes, but I still don't have my keys to get into my apartment. watched part one of Harry Potter and the Cursed Child and it was amazing. It was so freaking good. I've also never been in this area of the city which is like really really cool. I'm watching part one and part two in the same day which I've never done before. So part one started at two o'clock. It's now 4 45 almost five o'clock and part two starts at seven. So there's a really really good hot pot place near here. It's about a 10 minute walk that I like to go to. Shout out to my coworkers at my last job because they put me on the hot pot a few years ago and it's legit one of my favorite things to eat. And by the time that's over, it'll be closer to seven. So it'll be closer to the time of part two. I 
Now I'm back at the theater for part two of Harry Potter and the Cursed Child. Hopefully part two is about three hours because it's seven o'clock. I just had a big meal and you know how that can go. So, and hopefully it's really good. I think it'll be though. I think it'll be just as good. So we'll see. See you guys when I get back to my apartment. Firstly, to anyone who's in London or will be visiting London soon, I 10 out of 10 recommend going to see Harry Potter and the Cursed Child. Like part one was great, but part two was phenomenal. It was a bit long, so I am tired. And I know I said before that I would end this video with a Q&A, and I still will. However, instead of doing it right now, what I will do is do it in the morning, do a proper Q&A when there's better lighting and I can sit down and really talk to you guys. And I also will unbox the stuff that has come in for my home office. I have my double screens, and I think this is my keyboard and my mouse or whatever. So I'll unbox that stuff and put together my home office area and kind of show you how my desk will be set up moving forward in the morning, and I'll also do a Q&A. So watch out for that. days of one screen and turning one sideways if you're OG you remember I used to always have my screen like that so I took a break but I finished and here is the finished product here's my home workstation I actually put together this standing portion of the desk which can rise I'll show you when I swoop over that side this chair and this table I bought all of them from Amazon and it wasn't too expensive the whole thing was maybe $300 for this whole little setup. So I have my actual personal computer, one screen, the other screen. It's going to be a little difficult when my phone gets here. I don't know where I'm going to put it yet, but maybe I'll like shimmy over a little bit and kind of have it here. I want to show you it going up. Then it can like, you know, go bit down and it's tall enough since I'm pretty tall. I think I did a good job. I typically don't put things together in my apartment, so I'm proud of myself. Usually just use a task rabbit or call a guy I know or my dad or my stepdad or something. I did it myself and it's sturdy, it's not falling apart. It's good to go. So now into the Q&A. This is my first Q&A about moving to London, which I think is pretty interesting. And feel free to drop more questions under this video and maybe I'll consolidate them and maybe every other video do like a small Q&A portion at the end of each because as a black woman lawyer expat in London, I think that my experience is very unique and I'm happy to answer any questions and take you all literally along the journey with me as I learn and grow and meet people and do all these great things in London. Oh, and obviously thank you to the people who did ask me questions. Y'all are the GOAT, you know, 10 out of 10. So the first question someone had, they said, I've been wanting to do the same thing. What do you do and how do you like it? I am a lawyer for anyone who's watching this channel for the first time and how do I like it? I like London so far. It is very different than New York, but at the same time, it feels like New York. So there are things that are culturally very different. Food is different. In New York, people generally speak English. So even if you move to New York from another country and your English is bad, I feel like there is a stigma around it. There's racially charged comments and all these kind of things if you don't speak English, but here people speak a plethora of languages. Amongst the black people I've met, there's been a bunch of Jamaicans and Nigerians. Almost everyone I've met is Jamaican or Nigerian. So that's been a very interesting experience. Every party, instead of hip hop being the focal point, Afrobeats is the focal point. And then you know the Afrobeats session is coming to an end. You know the dance hall session is about to come. And then the hip hop session is trickling in throughout. They are very in tune 
with American culture, so that's also been kind of interesting. Like, a lot of people think that they know so much about America and they've never been there. I guess I can go more into my likes and dislikes in a later video. However, there is one thing that is so extreme. It's taken some getting used to, for sure. Sanitation here is very different. What people would do is coughing or sneezing in their hands instead of in their sleeves. Because I remember there was a time during our childhood when we were taught to cough in our sleeves. We could cough in your hands and then you're touching everyone. They like cough in their hands a lot. So then I don't really like people touching me. But then when you're at work, I have to shake hands and things like that. So that bothers me a lot. And I'm not trying to complain or even bash the culture, but it is something that I've noticed. But generally, more likes than dislikes. I'm really enjoying it here. And for anyone who doesn't know, I've been here for a little over two months. How long are you staying? Taking a couple steps back to early in the video when I said I had to get my visa, my biometrics card. I did, so I got my permanent biometrics card and I can stay until 2024, but I don't know if I will. There are a few things that I won't delve into in this video that would get me to stay long term. However, if I don't decide to stay long term, I probably will move between a year and a half and two years. Next question is what was the process? So I spoke a little bit about this in the video where I announced that I'm moving to London. If you haven't seen that, feel free to check it out here. I was hired in New York. I had an intra-company transfer to the London office. I'm on an employer-sponsored visa for the specific job. So if I was to decide to change jobs but I wanted to stay in London, I would have to get my visa transferred to the new job. And after my visa was approved, they gave me a temporary document which allowed me to stay until May. Once you got to London, you had the time before expiration of the document or 10 days after arriving in London to pick up your biometrics card. And really, it literally was just picking it up. I kept putting it up for almost a month because I thought I had to go through a process and take a picture and all this stuff. But no, you literally went to the post office and you picked up the card, they looked at your passport and they gave you your card. And the card that I got is expires in May of 2024. So that's how long I can stay in London without going through um, renewing of my visa. I think five years is the minimum for when you can apply for permanent residency here. I don't see myself being here for five years, but we'll see. And the card, it looks like an ID. I would show you, but my picture is horrible. The day I went to get my fingerprints done in the Bronx, I had no idea they were gonna take my picture, so my picture's horrible. They used it on the passport and now they use it here again. I don't carry it around because I just don't wanna lose it. I just carry it on my New York ID. And then the process of getting my bank account was a little bit more difficult. Just like in America, when you're opening up a bank account, you have to show proof of address. And because I was like bouncing around, I didn't have a proof of address until I finally found my apartment. I went in because my job was on the approved list of sponsors. They literally just wrote me a letter and then I was able to use that letter to get my bank account because of the fact that I hadn't had any bills yet. I, I know I flagged those two things when I first started the video. I wanted to get my bank account done in this video and I also wanted to get my permanent biometrics card and I did. So good to go. Check, check. And that's really the only process. I don't have to go home for anything. I don't have to do any of that. I can just stay here until 2024 if I want to. Acclimating to the weather. <laughs> That is hard. Like, the weather sucks here. And people were asking me about that before I moved here. They were like, are you, how are you going to deal with the weather? It's so gloomy, etc. And believe it or not, before people started asking me that, I didn't even know that. Because when we visited London the first time, it was nice. It wasn't baking hot like everywhere else, but it was nice. And there was a point in time where the weather really sucked for like two weeks and it was kind of getting to me a little bit. So I went to Paris for the weekend, got some nice weather, came back and felt a lot better. And since that point, the weather has been okay. It hasn't been hot, it hasn't been bad, it's been sunny. The weather is probably on my list of negatives, but it's it's tolerable. And I feel like whenever it gets too bad, I'll just go to Paris for the weekend. Ooh, someone said, how have the accents been and how do people typically react to yours? At first, I couldn't really hear the difference in English accents. You know how on Twitter, when we do that generic accent, like, do you like a cup of tea? And UK Twitter goes crazy. They're like, first of all, there's so many different accents, so many different dialects, blah, blah, blah. I can never hear the difference. I can hear the difference between someone who's from the Bronx, Brooklyn, and Queens, but I can't hear the difference between different people in London. But now, now that I'm hearing it all the time, I'm starting to hear a little difference between them, but I can't tell who's from where. I know up north, kind of a little bit, based on what people say, but generally, they still kind of sound the same to me. A lot of the people I hang out with sound similar. You know that song where it's like, um, how's it go? That song where it's like, Adiola, I wanna roll. So a lot of the people that I hang out with, they talk like that. 
it's like the ah when i first meet them like you're from america that's a distinct sound and then there's a different one that i can't mimic but i, I know what it sounds like and then other than that everyone sounds the same so i don't know which which accent is from where but I, I love it i like um english accents even before i moved to london i just love the way they speak especially like that top boy accent like in it like i like i like the accent as far as my accent goes people complain a lot that it's annoying when people mimic british accents but i think what happens is just because they're in america people mimic it like here people mimic american accents so every time someone will meet me be like oh you're from new york and I think it's funny. Like, I don't think nothing's wrong with it. But every single time I meet someone, they mimic my accent. And it doesn't bother me. I think it's cool. And they're pretty good at it. So a lot of people that have mimicked my accent, I think they could really be from New York. Like, y'all are kind of good. And they'll ask me to do a British accent to see what it sounds like. Maybe after a few drinks, I'll do it. But other than that, I'm like, ah, I'm not doing that. <laughs> <laughs> or if I'm super comfortable with the person, I'll do it. Most times I go, I've went out is with other people from New York too. So like they'll really comment on it. They love the way we sound. It leads to like conversations about how they want to go to New York. They've been to New York, this and that. Where you from? Blah, blah, blah. And it's also interesting. I remember I was waiting on the line to get into this bowling alley. These two girls. I was talking to the guy I was with, and they were like, "Where you from?" And you know, I was like, "New York." They was like. Oh, New York, da, da, da. where Harlem at, where the Harlem boys at, and I was, and I was like, dang, that's crazy, because I feel like in America, we'd be like, oh, where the English dudes at? She was like, nah, like, dudes out here is not it, it's Harlem, where Harlem at, blah, blah, blah. So I think that was interesting. Overall, I like the way they talk, so I'll pick up words, and I'll start using it for real. So, like, I use proper, like, oh, the party's proper lit. U-N-O, to me, it just sounds like you know, but the way they say it is together, so they like, oh, you know. That's one of my favorite parts about being here is the accents, for sure. And the words, for example, some girl was like, the rave is gonna be proper lit. What's a rave here? You know, a rave at home is like, ns, ns, the lights and everything. She's like, oh, no, no, it's like, it's like a yachty. And um, she's like, it's like a Jamaican party. It's in a, it's in a warehouse and all this kind of stuff. I was like, oh yeah, we outside. But I would have never guessed that that's what it was. So I think that whole experience of languages and learning different slang and all that stuff has been really interesting. What difficulty did you face in terms of types of people? Hmm. I don't think I've really faced any difficulty yet in terms of people. Um. Hmm. Yeah, I'll have to circle back on that one because I don't think I've faced uh, difficulties yet in terms of types of people. Have you experienced isolation or loneliness? I haven't. I haven't experienced isolation or loneliness. What it feels like to me is literally an extended solo trip. And I think that also I've reached the point where I'm gonna have visitors often from home. So I don't even think that I ever will feel lonely because I don't think I'll ever have a stretch of time where I'm alone. Like since I've moved here, I've been very intentional about going out and trying to make friends and meeting people to the point where I think I've literally been out every single weekend. I've met up with people who other people from home have told me, oh, check them out, it's my homie, blah, blah, blah. I've met up with uh, people from work. I've met up with people from law school. I've also been pretty intentional about kind of keeping my time zone or my, my body, my internal clock on an in-between. I haven't completely full on gone into the London hours. So like I haven't been up at let's say six o'clock London time and going to sleep at like 10 o'clock London time. More so I'll wake up around seven typically and I'll go to bed around 2 a.m. So that leads for a lot of crossover into American time. Keeping my body on a clock that allows for me to be accessible to people at home still. Working on New York hours for the most part, which is a little difficult, but that's also kind of why. Oh, I guess this goes into that. Work stress or a new work culture. Any work stress I have right now, I think it, one, comes with starting a new job. I'm still getting my bearings at this job, as I said, and because of that, I'm still learning so many new things. So quick spiel on what I do. Before I was doing mainly GP side deals, now I'm doing a bunch of stuff. I'm doing like LP side deals, I'm doing feeder deals and all these kind of things. That leads into me having to think from a different perspective, so that can be stressful at times. I think that just comes with the job. It's not really about the fact that I moved to London, I moved to a new job. But other than that, also the time zone gets a little stressful at times because like, let's say a deal is running late on a Friday, you know, late, in New York is a Friday evening, but here that's gonna be a Friday morning. Likewise, having to be in the office, it does cross over and become a little stressful when 
I have to be in the office at let's say 9 30. It's like I'm kind of in London when it comes to the days that I have to be in the office but then also I'm still on New York time a little bit because I'm working with mainly New York deals so that leads to a little bit of stress as well. All these questions are so good and they could be videos in themselves. I can generally go into a whole video about London work culture versus New York work culture but I'll just keep it down to maybe like two big differences that I've noticed. I know this is four but two big differences that I've noticed and one of them is that People generally enjoy like bonding and, and eating and having time and feeling like a family with people. So people will ask me like so lunch, coffee, etc. all the time. And people eat together in the common area for lunch. It's so ingrained in me to just get my lunch, sit in my office. I want to give a shout out to my mentor. She sent me my letter, a letter, so I got my first card. Um, I know she watches the videos, so she'll probably see this. Ooh, so kind. Thank you. Thank you for the card. I won't read it on camera, mind your business. But I just wanted to give a shout out because this is the first kind gesture that's been sent to me. I hope you guys like this London Living segment and stay tuned for more, a lot more in store for you. Watch out.